Hey everybody, happy Friday. Brad Bumgardner, the Executive Director for Indiana Audubon. It's Friday, April 22nd. We are in the height of migration. Hopefully you've seen the forecast for this weekend and you have plans to go out. If you're clicking around though, I'm sure on your social media feeds or online at the, some of the different news stories you've been reading a lot about, HPAI the highly pathogenic avian influenza. It's been in the news and there's a lot of different information out there, uh, especially state to state. So I thought I'd kind of come on, talk a little bit about it. The, uh, the key take home today though, obviously is it is a serious disease. And this virus is affecting a lot of different birds across a, a big spectrum of different sorts of species. And it's very selective in how it's affecting different birds. And so that's kind of a key that we're seeing. We're also, uh, I talked to some rehabbers and what they're telling me is that the treatment is euthanasia. And so this is just how serious that this is deadly for any bird that's getting this. There isn't a vaccine that they can take right now. So we're trying to be real careful to protect certain groups of birds that seem to be most susceptible to that. But the, the good news is, is that this is easily killed. Lysol, weak bleach solutions, just like other viruses can kill this. So using these biosecurity cleaning procedures uh, allow you still to be able to clean feed, uh, I'm sorry, clean and fill bird feeders up, the certain, certain restrictions there. So who do we know that's really getting hit the hardest with this? Well, raptors are number one. So we're seeing a lot of eagles, we're seeing uh, hawks, we're seeing falcons and turkey vultures uh, are all kind of reporting in high numbers. The other big group is waterfowl. So any of those ducks, geese, cormorants, loons, they're getting hit with this. And then domestic livestock. So again, a lot of those domestic waterfowl, so ducks and geese, chickens as well. We're not seeing a lot of songbirds though, oddly enough. And there's a lot of reporting that can occur with all the feeders that are out there. But we've also seen studies done around say like chicken farms where, where we know it's present. We're testing around the area of the local native birds and, and we're not seeing songbirds that are sick within these hot zones. So it's kind of cluing us in on who's getting it and who's not. Not to say they can't be carriers of the disease, but at least they're not really showing any of the uh, symptoms of illness. And that's one big difference from last year is that last year we didn't know what it was. Is this a virus? Is it bacterial? Is it uh, environmental? Well, here we've actually identified it. So that way you're gonna see different guidance than they were giving last year when they told you to take the feeders down. So the, the obviously the number one important thing you can do is you really need to be cleaning feeders. And so uh, a 10% bleach solution, that's the best way to go. Clean them. I would do it every single day because even if you have these kind of these EcoGuard or EcoClean type feeders that, that are claimed to uh, be able to resist some of these bacterial or their antimicrobial properties, uh, you're still going to have things like waste seed and dirt and bird feces that get on the surface and those surfaces then can uh, attract or hold on to that virus. And so that's why you still have to clean even if you have those types of feeders. And that's the number one thing is just cleaning those feeders down. There are still about three different circumstances where you may want to take your feeder down. Uh, for one, just comfort level. If you don't feel comfortable, you're worried that there's a, a higher risk to the birds around you, you might take them down. If you're seeing sick or dead birds, definitely take your feeders down. Wait as the event passes through, make sure there's no more other sick or dead birds before you were put your clean feeders back up. And thirdly, if you're feeding near uh, that domestic waterfowl, and so you have ducks and geese from pond that come up and feed at your feeders, that's a situation we don't want because we know waterfowl are really susceptible to that. So if you, if you don't have those three situations though, the current guidance that the Indiana DNR is providing us is that you don't need to take them down if you're using those cleaning procedures. So you should be able to do that, keep your feeders up and keep feeding the birds. We will obviously continue to monitor this. This might change day to day, it might change week to week, but this is the current guidance that we have from the Indiana DNR that we can give to our Indiana Audubon membership. And so with that, uh, that's kind of our news for this Friday. Hopefully I see you either out here on the trail uh, coming up here, um, somewhere out here this weekend or maybe next weekend at the Indiana Audubon Spring Gathering or then two weeks from now at the Indiana Dunes Burning Festival. And you will even notice at our different events that there will be some contingencies because of avian flu, whether it be banding procedures or how we can showcase some of the birds of prey that some of our folks bring uh, to some of our programs. And you'll see that as we uh, adjust to our avian flu outbreak.